Welcome to the wood shop. Today we're going to put this lock set in. It's a chest lid lock that I got from Rockler. It's actually really decent quality. I was surprised. I've gone through a lot of locks and most of them are very, very poor quality. This one is a pretty high quality. I'm very pleased with it. The mechanism worked really well. It comes up and then goes over. So it gives you plenty of options for uh, holding your top down. The only thing I don't like about it, and I'll tell you what, this is the first time I've used it, so I can't really tell you how this is going to play out. But when the top strike plate is on, you see that gap right there? What that means is we're going to have to recess either the bottom or the top in order to get a nice tight fit in there. Probably I'll recess the top because most people will see that less. I like my bottom lock plates to be flush with the top of this. So anyway, in order to install this, we're going to use what I believe is three router bits. The first router bit fits that width right there. And that'll give us a perfect indentation. In fact, this radius is the perfect radius for this. So we won't have to do any cleanup work at all with the chisel. We'll simply run the router back and forth on there, and it should come up perfect where we can fit this in. The second router bit that we're going to use is this one, which is the thickness of the body. If you use the same thickness here, it would kind of work, but you'd have a, a, a situation where the middle of your, your lock doesn't get any support because only the edge would have support. So when possible, there's not a big difference with this lock, but when possible, try to use a uh, correct size bit for dropping this in just to get that extra support around this area. Now the third bit we're going to use, generally you wouldn't need to use a third bit. However, with this particular strike plate that we have, it's actually not the same thickness as this one. However, I'm going to probably use the same thickness because I don't really have a medium range bit. So I'm going to use this bit. I did a test cut already. It's a slightly bit more room. But rather than using this thinner bit to clean up the edge, because this will, that'll end up being too small, I'm going to use this much smaller bit um, to make the plunge for the, for the lock actually where it's going to go up and through this. And this one actually is significantly smaller. So that should give us enough room to put this in without having too wide of a space up into the top piece for this lock set to fit. So anyway, the first thing you do on a lock like this is lay out your center line. This is a centering lock, not all locks center. So important to know this. This lock, the key is perfectly centered with the top of the lock. So all you need to do on your box to put this in is to find your center line. These center line rulers work great. I've actually already set it up. I'm right at uh, 10 and 3, uh, slightly under 10 and 3 sixteenths, and slightly under 10 and 1, 2, 3 sixteenths. So this is very, very close. So I'll mark my center line right here. And that's where you want the center of your lock to go, right there. So the first thing you're going to mark is that line. And then what I like to do also after that is to put a line like this just so you kind of know where you're going the whole way through. Now you'll, you'll re-sand this obviously before you finish it so all your pencil marks should be removed at that point. So there's our center line. We can now lay out this lock and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this um, right off on the edge because I can really see where my my point in the center of that is. You, you could go through the whole measuring process but um, I think I'm feel confident enough just measuring this that we're okay. So I'm going to put this right here and come right up to the edge. And you can actually touch the edge with that. So make sure you're centered. Come right up to the edge with your tri uh, square and then hold that down and make a mark right there so you can see it on the front. Do the same thing on the other side. Make a little mark right there. And then that should be the limit points of the circular part of this. That should be the limits of where that goes. So when you put your router, and we're going to use the router table for this, we're going to go all the way to there, and then we're going to come all the way back to the other side. 
And then we're going to test, obviously, test fit the depth of this, and test, test fit the width to make sure everything fits right. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my router now. Again, we'll start with the, with the fattest bit, um, which should give us a perfect depth for this. And we're going to route this piece right now from here to there. We're going to start out routing that. So let's set up the router table. Okay, we're ready to make our first run on this. I've done all the test measurements and everything. Also, just a word on uh, process when you do this and technique. We're going to drop this down. We're going to move it back a little bit to touch this block. Then we're going to move it up to that block. Um, we're going to be changing the bits as we go through the steps of mortising the lock-in. The one thing we never want to change is the depth of this fence. That's this way and this way. Always leave it here. It's centered on here. I've done several tests to get a good uh, bit of spacing front to back on this narrow piece of wood where we're going to drop our lock into. So don't change this at all. You can change your router up and down. You can change your stop locks. Don't change the fence. The fence always remains here once it's done until you're completely done with both the top and the bottom of the box. So I think we're ready. Let's drop it on the bit and make a first pass and see how close my initial measurements are. say about a sixteenth of an inch that we need to go and you know like anything in woodworking you, you can sneak up on the setting to make sure that you get the proper uh, spacing that, of, of what you want so I was a little bit almost centered on this side a little bit too far, far this way so I'm going to reset my stop block to move a slightly that way I'm going to drop this down again it's a tight enough fit that I'm really not concerned about running this multiple times I also feel like I may need to drop this depth a little more I don't know if you can see it but this kind of almost has a diamond shape on the way this back is done I don't know that we're going to be able to do that so let me reset uh, run a second time and I think I'm going to do a little deeper on the depth as well uh, and we'll test it and see how close I got to uh, dropping this in perfect but I'm, I'm really really close at this point um, I am a big fan on sneaking up on um, the uh, measurements and this is actually uh, a good example of that as well so let me reset the blocks and we'll see if I can get this thing perfect Okay, our lock set fits perfectly. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. There's maybe a 64th um, bit of slop in there, um, which is not a big deal. When actually this is done, it's going to look fantastic. The depth I'm happy with. 
Um, I, it's completely below the surface and you can always take like a piece of wood or something and look for gaps in that if you want. Just run it across like that. There's no rocking. It's, uh, it's, the depth is pretty much right where it needs to be. So uh, also good with that. So we're going to move on to our second step and that's going to be to change our bit. And now we're going for this bit. This bit is the width of the body and it's the main mortise we're going to make. Now we're making a really deep mortise with this particular lock. So um, we're going to have a lot of this bit exposed. It's kind of the longest one I've actually ever done. So I'm hoping we don't have any issues with it. And I'm hoping I can get enough through my table to do that. If not, then the last little bit we're going to have to just do by hand, which is no big deal. Um, but we may end up having to do that. So I'm going to change bits and we're going to start on that. But while we have our lock in set, let's mark where we need to make our mortise. And this one's going to be, we'll, we'll, you can do a lot more slop on this side. So I'm going to just hand mark this right here, which is basically right at where these uh, lines come over. It's slightly a little bit more uh, just because, uh, again, if it's a little bit too long, it's no big deal. This will be nice and solid because of those. So I'm going to put these two marks in. I'm going to put a little line over the top just so I don't make a mistake. When I'm looking through my hole here, I want to make sure I don't accidentally line it up with these and cut this thing wrong. So let me put this on here, set the machine up, and we'll get cutting this one. Okay, so we're set up and ready to go. Uh, again, the fence did not move. That ensures that your bit will continue to be centered within this groove right here. So if it's set up to be the width of the body of the lock, um, and we're not going to take <laughs> this entire inch and a half out at once. So we're going to do this step by step, raising the router bit maybe quarter to a half inch uh, with each pass until we get to the depth that we need. And we're simply going to go back and forth, back and forth, lift it up, back and forth, lift it up, raise the bit, raise the bit, and then it's going to continue on until we have our proper depth. So, let's go. Unfortunately, it doesn't take into account these uh, the corners and the bit is rounded. It fits in perfectly. The, the width is just perfect. Unfortunately, it's not going to drop in there because our um, rounded corners are not going to fit on the square one. So there's two ways to fix this. The first way is very simple. We come through when we're done with the chisel and square up those corners. Um, that's a lot of work. I don't feel like doing that work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my uh, stop blocks a little bit wider um, so that I can uh, account for the, the circular part. Let's just eyeball that. I think it needs to go about a quarter of an inch. So let's do that. The only real important thing on this is you don't want to be, you know, so far into there that you don't have room for your screws. Um, but, you know, you, you can have a fair amount of slop in there and it's not really going to cause you any kind of a huge issue. So I'm just going to move these out a bit. I'm going to drop this down and make another pass. Let's see if we can get that to where we can fit ours in. All right. So and I'm stopping this dust collector between runs so you can hear me. Perfect now. So we can drop this right down 
raising this bit and uh, let's get some uh, pots in there. Now, those of you with the router know there's a fine adjustment on the router. And if I only had to go a little bit, I would just use that fine adjustment. But we have to go more than the fine adjustment is going to give us. So we're just going to move it in. Make sure you lift this above that blade or you ruin your wood. So bring it in at a nice steep angle. Slowly let it go down. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Yeah, we're, we're good. So, wow. And that is as high as this bit will go. I'd actually like to get this a little bit deeper. Um, I mean, I, mean, I may actually uh, see, see if I can get a little bit more depth on that. Uh, I don't think it's an issue right now. But, um, you don't want any of this box set to sit proud of this surface at all. If anything you want to recess, if it sits proud at all, you'll end up uh, having a gap when you close your top. It's really right there where it needs to be, but it's so close that if I can get even another million, half a millimeter of uh, depth, I'll be real happy with it. used a nail and hooked it under this and got it out. Uh, it was tight, but I went ahead and opened it. <laughs> Probably smart. So open that first so you have something to hold on to to pull it out. So the inside's good. It's uh, it's flush. Uh, the plate of the lock is flush with the body. So, um, you know, we're we're golden on this. I mean, this is, uh, this is the fit you want to look for. So um, that actually is really, really nice. I'm, I'm very, very happy with that. So let's... Uh, and this is a, this is a little tight. The mechanism itself is nice and loose, but the uh, the lock itself is really tight in the hole. Not really tight, but tight enough. And it goes in fine up until that very last little bit. Not a big deal. Um, I'll probably just leave it like that. But let's move on to the top, the, the strike plate. I think we're uh, we're done with this. Okay, so our top we're going to do the same way. We're going to find the center first. Um, since this is a centering lock plate and again, they not they, they aren't all so you need to put it on top of your lock while it's in the top While it's in the bottom the bottom piece and figure out if this is a perfectly centered plate or if it needs to be offset I've already determined this is perfectly centered. So I'm not terribly concerned uh, about that. So I'm gonna Go with it fully centered. So we're gonna Once again find our center and we are at 10 and 3 16 10 and one, two, just a bit. And one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we're good here. All right, so let's mark our center line. All right, center line is marked. Now we'll make a couple of other lines on here. First one is to make this center line more visible. And then we're going to put this on there. And again, this was centered. Now this isn't entirely uh, obvious that that's centered because we don't have a reference point. So I'm going to put my center finding uh, ruler back on here just so I can make sure that I do have this center because this is this is the visible part of your project. So you really want this to be nice. Um, so let's make we're going to make sure this is center. So I'm going to leave my center finding ruler on that center mark I already made. And I'm just going to make sure that this is centered between my two points. So we're at one and one, two, three, and one and one, two, three. A little bit over there. One and one, two and a half, one and one, two and a half. Okay, I think we're about good right over there. Okay. Yeah. 
like that. So we're good. So let's mark this right here and right here. And again, there's enough slop in this lock that if you're not 100% on, you're going to be okay. It's not that accurate of a lock. But we're close. We should be able to get a really nice um, line on this. So let me make a better mark one here. Put my reference point and we'll set our stop locks. All right, let's set our stop locks and away we go. Move my, remove my dust collector so I can see through the hole. change the bit too. So the first thing you want to do is change the bit. So I'm going to change the bit. Okay, we're all ready to go here. Our, I know I'm going to have to go deep on this because I already looked at how the strike plate works on this. So I'm going to start it out at a decent depth and I'm probably going to increase it as I go. Uh, but we'll see how this works. I 
confident. Um, and again, it's not a bad box set. This has a fair amount of slot. And I'll show you what I mean on that. When the lock is locked, should be there. If the, if the two pieces of box are together properly, these two will be almost touching, and you can see that slot. What that means is the top is going to go bump, 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 and you open it up. So what we want is to get some of that slop out, so when this moves over, uh, and you can see there's actually kind of a wedge, you can see it, there's a wedge and angle on this side, so that as it moves over and engages the strike plate, it actually tightens itself up. So what I want to do is kind of make that raised to the point, so this, in order to raise this, it has to be recessed into the top, so that when this comes up, I'm right about that point when I get in there. And I'm getting close, and you can see that gap is, is actually pretty big. I mean, that's a good uh, 16th of an inch gap, which means I really need to recess this a good 16th of an inch. And I don't quite think I'm there yet, so I'm going to do a little bit more of a recess in better. And I'm using my fine adjustment on this. It should be plenty. I think it's the last run I'll do regardless. to show this part it's a little bit tricky for lining up where you need to make your mortise for your actual um, lock um, so we can pretty much center this using the centering mark we made last time which is right here and with this centered with that um, and the lock will never go farther to the left than this piece right here because that's our bolt so this left side is fairly easy to calculate where you need to make your mortise to. And we're going to put our mark just beyond uh, this portion right here. And I'm sorry, you can't see that very well. But just beyond this portion is where we're going to make our mark on here to kind of have this uh, so we have uh, you know plenty of room for the lock plate to go up. And it's just it's purely an aesthetic thing. So um, you don't want to go too far into this area or this area because you want to have enough force on this to, to get a good solid um fit um, but there's a fair amount of room for for slop on this so you, you don't need to be super precise on this so i think i'm going to put this right about here because again we have our curved end so we want to make sure we clear that so i'm going to go all the way basically right to here so that's going to be the the leftmost edge of where this lock goes now when this lock opens it actually opens and then goes to the right so to simulate opening boom it comes up and then it goes to the right so we need to make sure that this lock entirely clear the bolt rather entirely clears um, the mortise that we're going to make and you see it's relatively close to this edge here uh, there's more than enough room to make it solid but keep in mind um, you know you want to do the minimal amount with having enough and, and also again accounting for that curve that we're going to get in our router bit so i'm going to move this over let's say to right about here uh, I feel comfortable doing that. So, so these will be our two marks that we're going to use to line up. Um, and I'll make my final marks here. We'll do some cuts. And we'll see what we get. I don't think it's going to be... I think it'll work out with this. So, let's line these up. So, and again, we don't want to overrun our other ones. We want to make sure that we uh, are conscientious of where... The other marks are so we don't accidentally align our saw our uh, router bit incorrectly so we'll go there and we'll go here for our adjustment marks okay so we're going to do these two inner inner ones 
So let me readjust the router and we'll cut this. Okay, we're ready to cut this. One thing we did not talk about, that is the depth that we're gonna make this. And again, we're not gonna take it all on one pass. We'll take it on multiple passes. But basically you just need enough depth to cover this lock. So you could go here and test it. Um, I find if you just put it over the router like that, it's pretty much where you need to go. So you need to cover this and then a little bit more of that. And this is the maximum height this will ever go. So this is directly proportional to this. So you'll never have to go higher than that. And it's actually a relatively small amount and we've already got part of that plowed out anyway. So realistically, let's go right ahead and, and go to our final depth and see if it's enough. So I'm gonna raise this up. Again, I'm just using the fine adjustment on this. It doesn't need a whole lot. And let's see if this is enough. No, actually, the fine adjustment isn't gonna be enough. We need to actually raise this router. Okay. So we'll raise it a little bit. All right. All right, so our router is now raised to where I think it should probably go. And again, I'll just look at this real quick. And this is slightly higher than this needs to be. So I think we're good. I feel comfortable taking that amount off at once. It's not really a, a, too much. And again, I, uh, I replaced this router bit with that small one because we really just need enough width to get our, our thin bolt through. So uh, let's do some cutting. set in we need to cut our hole for our key to fit in so this is a type of key um, that is uh, long you know and it's got like the tra traditional key shapes uh, some keys are just a, a point so you can just make a hole and be done with it we're not going to use our router keyhole because that's not this what this is for this is a uh, this will just need to go straight in and then the lock itself is where it turns so what I've done is I've selected a drill bit. I'm going to drill two holes, one right on top of each other. And I've selected a drill bit that is just slightly uh, bigger than the uh, radius of this thing, um, the diameter, uh, so that I can get enough room to, if, I, if it doesn't quite get in there right, I want to have enough room to, to get it to move a little bit. In fact, let me use a one size smaller than this. If I need to go bigger, I'll go bigger. So... We'll use one size smaller, and this is giving us a little bit of play in here. Um, you know what? We'll see if we can get lucky. And I'll even go one size smaller than that. So we're going to go with a 730 seconds drill bit. And these, if you don't have a set of these with the true points on them, it's, it's just so useful to have these with the actual points on them uh, to get us started. So anyway, we're going to do that. Uh, and we're going to drill a hole, then one run it right underneath and see if we can get the correct size. Now, the way we're going to mark the depth of this hole is using this um, square adjustable. And we're going to put that point right down there in the middle. And we know for when we set this up that we're centered. So this hole comes in the center. So as long as we did everything properly, which, you know, hopefully we did, as long as we did everything properly, this should be centered properly and we should be able to get our hole proper. So let's see if that works. So the way I'm gonna mark this center line, cause I don't really trust my marker, that it looks like it's just slightly off. Uh, I'm gonna actually put this here and line it up right with the center of that bolt. 
So right with the center, and then I'm gonna mark this all the way down. And that should be exactly our center line where we need to put our lock, our first lock hole. So let's do that, make a mark all the way down. And that should be where it goes. All right, and then in order to do the distance down on this, we're gonna do this again, because I had to reset this thing. So let's do this again. This needs to go down approximately to right there. And as you see, there's a little bit of a hole in there. And I know where that needs to be for my awl so I can make a nice point hole in that. So we're right there in the center. Uh, I think that's gonna be good. I'm locking this. I'm gonna put that in. And let's see if we can, on the first try, get this in the proper location. So there's my awl. So we're gonna put this down here. Line right up with that hole with that line. Put my all this is important to get this critical. This is the most visible part of your box, so try to get this as just nice looking as you can. Now, this has a big escutcheon that it came with, so we actually have quite a bit of room for error on this. Um, since it has a, a good size escutcheon, that's going to hide any mistakes we made so this is really big so you know this is not super critical that we get this perfect uh, but you know the, the closer you can get it's, it's a reflection of your, your work ethic so you do what you feel you want so let's get a hole oh! and you can just eyeball this you're only you're going to go completely through this first set so it's not like you're going to go through the back it's not a big deal and again, this point is just worth its weight in gold because it'll line right up in that hole I made with the awl. And I'll be able to get a perfect hole. So I'm just eyeballing it. Broke through, it's pretty good. I'll do a little bit of, there we go. Done. All right, so now if we drop this in there, let's see how close we made it to our hole. Oh, I put that in again without putting the key up. <laughs> oh well, fuck it, I'll, I'll fix that later. All right, so we're in the hole. Let's see how close we are. Oh yeah. Right on, I think we're good, I think we're golden. So let me fish that out again, and we'll open and close it a couple times and put one below it, see if we can get this to work properly. Okay, so for our second hole, I'm gonna use a little bit smaller bit, and you could use the same size bit. It's not gonna cause any real issues. Again, it's got a big scutcheon to cover everything, so uh, if you wanna use a smaller bit, use a smaller, if you don't care, just use a bigger one. Let's see what we get. I'm just going to put this on the line just below this. I hope it doesn't go off track while I'm drilling. Just go slow. And you should be able to... Now it'll pull itself through, but it shouldn't go through to the other side, and it didn't. So let's see if our key fits. with the drill bit you can kind of push it down. Let's see if I get any on there. These are new bits so actually that may have worked. Alright let's see if we fit now. So that does fit in really nicely. So let's see just how good that is. We do need to clean this up a bit. Tear out inside. And unfortunately, because I have no clay whatsoever inside of this uh, unit, I actually need to use the vacuum to get this out. Also, I'm gonna use this little attachment here and clean these holes up on the outside a bit. Just with my hands. That's fine. There we go. 
and then you see our escutcheon is going to cover this completely and it'll look fine when it's done. So let, I'm going to vacuum this out. We stop the video and make it work and then come back and tell you guys it worked the first time <laughs> anyway we'll see let's see what it does so we're in we're flush the thing fits fantastically well let's see what we get with this wow i think we're golden <laughs> look at that yeah that works nice it is just a slightly and you kind of have to hit this perfectly but i think actually if i run my um that bit with a drill rather than my hands i'll actually get a big enough hole to make this thing slide a little better all right that's all we need for that and i think we're good let's see how this works now if it goes in easier so come up hit it yeah we're we'll going through that works nice Okay, so now we're going to put our, and actually as I've been doing this, it's getting looser, so it's actually coming in and out really nice now. So let's go put our holes in. I mean, that's just pretty simple. Um, I would suggest you use a center finding um, tap if you, if you don't have one, you know, just kind of eyeball it. Um, we fit so well in this hole uh, that you're not going to be really in that big a deal if, if you don't use a center finding bit, um, simply because uh, there's not a lot of play in here, so your screws are going to draw this in. So let me find that bit and uh, we'll tap that out. Okay, I found my center punch and this is supposed to be self-finding because it has a little beveled edge which fits on this bevel for the screws. The important thing here is make sure this is up and down and not at an angle. If you end up with this thing at an angle, you're going to have issues because your uh, screws are going to be angle where they're not supposed to so i know all of this is hard to do at once but to the best of your ability try to get this lined up like that and then when you're when you're there keep hold it and then just boom and that went off centered <laughs> so this this is just it's not an exact science it's kind of a pain science so um so let's drill and see what we get now a, a note on brass screws um, you want to make these holes really oversized from what you're used to. So when you do your drill bit and you select your size for these, um, you want to be well into the, um, the screw, um, edges. You, you really don't want to be just on the, uh, the shank of the screw. You want to actually be in the screw parts. If you're not, you're going to end up spinning these in half it's so easy to do using a larger drill bit you actually have some spring in the wood so once you um drill that hole even if it's as wide as the as the screw is when you do it the wood will spring back a bit and it will allow you to still have enough room to um to make it work properly so let's use this one i think this is going to be the proper size for this And let's see what we get. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use this thing. That that punch didn't, didn't really work at all. So hopefully we get some kind. Yeah, that thing went off the center too. I think it's because of the oak wood. Oak is just such a hard wood, and it has a lot of of these ruts in it. So if your thing hits a rut, it's gonna it's gonna follow that. So, but I think we're good. I'm just gonna do this right through here. I think we'll be all right with this. So straight down. All right. I think we're good. Another important thing is get 
a bit that fits properly on your screws. Don't use one that's the wrong size or you're bugging your screws all up. So let's see how good we have. And you really want, in order for a brass screw not to twist in half, you should be you should put almost no pressure at all. And this is almost no pressure at all that I'm putting on this. It's just gliding through, which is beautiful. Exactly what I want to feel. So that is the right size bit for this. So we're in. It's seated properly. Let's do our other side, and we're gonna to have to try to fix this hole because it's a little cockeyed. So stop every little bit and let your drill naturally clean the hole out. And then get everything in. We'll see if this uh, lock set works properly. Again, this is requiring very little effort. Again, you do not want to use a drill bit that's the same size as the shank. You want it larger than the shank. You can go up to and even beyond the actual threads and it will still work great. Now this is solid. My screws are all nice and tight, as you can see. And everything looks like it fit perfect. So let's try our key, see how well this fits. Wow, that just works like a dream. Perfect. All right, so let's do our top and see if we um, properly size the top and everything. So we'll be right back. Okay, so here's our top. Our top is going to be quite a bit easier than the bottom because all there is is putting this in and the top actually went in. There's no play whatsoever in that. So it's just drilling the holes and putting it in and we'll set this on top of the box and see if it works. So again, I'm just going to drill it right through here. Um, because none of those things seems to be working. Again, th this drill bit's not going to go through the top. Make sure if you're drilling through a thin that you put a, a piece of tape or something on here so you don't drill too far. Since there's no uh, problem that I will never do that on this because it's not deep enough. I'm not going to worry about it. Again, when you turn these screws, it should be like no resistance whatsoever. If you are feeling resistance with these brass screws, stop. Get a bigger drill bit, redrill the hole. It takes nothing to spin these heads right off here, and then you're spending a lot of time trying to pick off the uh, broken piece that's in your wood. So, All right, we're golden. That's good. All right, let's get this side in. Now let's see if we. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again to make a little hole in this because this is actually really close, and I want to get closer. All right, I come pretty close with that hole. So uh, starter holes are always nice. screw and we'll try it. Screw is going in very easily. Also I highly recommend you put a little bit of wax on the screws. I use beeswax. So I would just use beeswax or you know any any kind of a that type of wax. Alright so we're in this is solid. Let's try it. We do good or what? Right. Let's see if we can see the moment of truth here. My hinges aren't on, which you may have seen in an earlier video. They're not great. All right, so let's see what we get. Put our top on there. Line it up like it would be. If the hinges are on. And that's it. Let's turn it, see if it locks. Oh, no resistance whatsoever. And look at that. A very slight, like I told you, th this is a lot of slop in this lock set. We could have gone a little bit deeper on the top mortise for the plate itself. And that would have taken a little bit more of that slop. But we got most of that slop out. This just barely moves. I would say it's probably two pieces of paper that that's going to go up. If that, it's really a nice, nice fit. So this lock we're going to call done other than uh, our scutcheon. 
I think you guys can figure out how to put the escutcheon on. I mean, you essentially line it up and it's, it's unfortunately nailed in. I don't like, but it's nailed in. So make sure your key is properly located. Um, so it looks good, it's straight. Uh, and you can only mark your holes really with the nails, it's always gonna fit through there. So mark your holes, tap that in very easily. Uh, and you're done. I mean, call this a day. Now, one other thing I want to show you, in case you're curious. Rather than putting this big old escutcheon on, which again, I think is the, the worst part of this lock, is this escutcheon. The rest of the lock is fantastic. It's just a very nice lock set. Quality is great. Rather than use this, you can get one of these inset or inlay um, keyholes. And these require uh, you to obviously... And I already have it kind of started, but this will require you to, for the most part, all by hand, take this out and put this in. And then you'd either have to epoxy, probably epoxy this in um, to get it to, to be properly in there. I would say it should be epoxy. But you could put that in. It would look actually really nice with that in there. And that would cover all the kind of the nastiness from the way we had to do the hold. Um, the reason I didn't do this is because if you look at the thickness of this box and the thickness of this escutcheon, it's really close. Now, this is brass, and I could have put it on and then sanded it down in the front, and it would have sanded just fine. Um, and I just chose not to do that. Um, I just don't um, want to go through that uh, for this project. I'm, I'm happy with this discussion. Uh, this is going to have an old-time toolbox look for this particular project anyway. And I kind of like this discussion look on there anyway. So we're going to go with the discussion it came with. Um, and we'll call this done. Uh, look for projects later. Uh, this actually box has a hidden uh, compartment in it, uh, both in the top and the bottom, and a couple lift-out trays. And uh, happy woodworking!